afternoon. Um, Dakota and uh, Beck, both of them have hamstrings. They'll be day to day. Those are the two injuries from the game. Yeah, Coach, I was just wondering if you got down to the bottom of the uh, Purcell exchange with Russell Wilson that occurred right behind you on the sidelines there. And, you know, you didn't hear it. You didn't hear any of that, uh, even though it looked like you were right there. Yeah, when we, when we were up there, uh, obviously was addressing Mike on the personal foul that he had, talking with him as he passed by me, heard him say, you know, let's go and uh, did not know that it was directed to any specific person. It looked like it was just he wanted everybody to start going and wanted to get a spark. Um, so that was really all that I heard. I talked with Mike after, talked with Russell, everybody. Everybody's good. Part of it, it's an emotional game. Coach, you've, you've talked this year about how close you guys have been, the close losses, keeping guys together. When it's not a close loss, how does the message have to change to kind of get everybody back? To where you want to be ahead of another road game. You know, we need to continue to look at ourselves individually. Starts with me, um, go to the coaches, the players, to see how we can improve. It's not just one guy. It's it's a, everybody. Everybody's got to get better. Everybody's got to play better. Um, we're obviously not happy with what the outcome was yesterday. We can play better, and we're a better football team than that. And uh, we got to uh, continually get better across the board. Coach, regarding Russell Wilson, is he, was he dealing with any injury during the game? I thought at one point I saw Rippon, like Mike, he might have been getting no. warm, no injury. Secondly, is part of it confidence with Russ? We've never seen Russ play like this for this long of a stretch at any point in his career. Is it confidence related or is it still the newness and then the mishmash of personnel? It's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, it is, there is some uh, semblance of newness with this whole group and we've had a lot of changes throughout the offense with different uh, people that have been out there playing with him um, and we need to get him you know the confidence back to be able to make the plays that he can make um, but he's uh, you know he's out there and he's fighting every single play you know I give him so much credit you know he's taking a bunch of hits um, and it's because he's trying to do everything he can to make a play so I appreciate that on how he's doing that and everybody's got to play better around him. One quick injury thing is there a chance to get either Mike Boone or Randy Gregory back working this week? The plan right now is we're hoping to get Mike Boone, start his clock. Uh, Randy, we're, we're, that's still up in the air. He might need a little bit more time. And then following up on, on what Troy asked about Russell, he, he got in such a good rhythm early in that game against Vegas. When you went back and watched the film, d do you have any better idea of just why that didn't that didn't come along the way it did the week before? Unfortunately, you know, we started off backed up. And we had that minus yardage play uh, right out the gate. Um, and then we're in a you know farther long down in distance with a third down. So it's hard to get in rhythm there. Then we started out minus 10, I believe. Um, had an opportunity for a third and two. And though I believe the, um, we didn't convert on that or third and three. Um, so just those two drives, you know, you look at each one and there's a critical play within each one that kind of stalls the drive. And so uh, we got to eliminate those so that we have the ability uh, to continue a drive. You mentioned Russ taking hits. How much of that is on him trying to extend it, and how much of it is on uh, protection things that need to be cleaned up? Uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, it's not just one. Uh, it, it's all 11 guys. It's the coaches. Um, we need to get better plays when people are open faster for him. Uh, at the same time, we need to be better in pass protection. We need to better, be better route runners. So we all just need to be better across the board. Nathaniel, you mentioned after the game on Sunday that you're, you, there's a lot of guys that you're trying to get uh, up to speed. And, and I know you're not here using injury as an excuse, but from a practical standpoint, what, what kind of challenges has that created that so many of the guys that you sort of built a lot of this around um, haven't been in there that you're using, you know, guys that are undrafted rookies, things like that? Uh, it's not an excuse. You know, we definitely have had a lot of changes, uh, but whoever's out there has to play at a high level. Uh, I give a lot of credit to those young guys stepping up, doing everything that they can to be in the right place at the right time for uh, our team. And uh, they got to continually get better. You know, if they're the ones that are going to be out there, they got to play at a higher level. Um, it's a challenge. I think the coaches are doing a good job at trying to get those guys up to speed, the different plays that we want to do, because uh, we want to keep it simple and at the same time still do enough to attack a defense. Um, so that's where we got to go. Uh, you know, it's kind of a fine line right there. And, uh, but those guys are working very hard. They're trying to do everything they can to be able to help this football team out. Coach, at three and eight, are you aware of the fan frustration that's happening? And what, what is your message to the fans now? I mean, nobody's as frustrated uh, as I am. <laughs> 
You know, this is not where we wanted to be at this, this time in the season. None of us thought it was going to be like that, and that responsibility is fully on me. Uh, I want to be the one that uh, can do everything to help this football team because we as a group have to come together and find a way to win a football game. And uh, we can't uh, play the way that we played last week, uh, the, yesterday and expect to win a football game. So it starts with me from the preparation, practice preparation, every single thing that we do. Um, I'm the most frustrated. I think our fans are great. I mean, they want to win just like we all do. So, I, I mean, I don't blame them for being frustrated. And uh, for me, all I know is to work put my head down with our staff. I believe in this staff, believe in these players, and uh, we got to get better plays, better execution across the board. Hey, no, uh, I'm just curious, you, you, you've never been through anything like this, calling plays, and how do you walk the line between changing things up to try something different and trying to get good at a core something? I mean, right now, we're doing whatever we can that we think is the best for the players that we have out there. And so we're continually working and trying to find different ways to get people open, different ways to run the football. Um, so anything that we can do, uh, we're looking at every single thing that we possibly can to try to put the guys in the best spot. You mentioned the fans there. I, there's only so much that you can control. And, and you know you want to filter out outside noise. But what would you say to a fan who's thinking, do I want to – keep coming to watch this. Fans vote with their wallets and their feet. You know this, you've seen it growing up with it. What, do you, what would you say to the guy who's undecided? Should I come back and be a part of this and, and want to see this out? Our, our fans mean the world to all of us. Uh, you know, we, we work hard because we want to put a great product out on the field. Uh, we know that hasn't been there, especially from the offensive side of the ball. And everybody in that room, both coaches and players, are doing every single thing we can to try to put a better product out there. And uh, we got to prove it. You know, we have to prove it to our fans, and uh, that's what we're going to continually do. Coach, from an operation standpoint, offensively, there's moments where you guys do things well, and then the next place something goes wrong. What, what has been the flow like from week one with Clint taking over to week two, now that you've had a chance to review the film? Uh, I thought you know, Clint did a really good job. I, I think we ran the ball really well. Uh, you, there's always things that you're going to, uh, as coaches, you're always going to be critical about what you think you could do better. Uh, Clint is the same way. Uh, Justin's the same way. Every single coach is the same way. What can we do to help these guys even more? We're always trying to do anything and everything that we possibly can. Um, but I think that the operation has been really good. And uh, right now, we're going to keep rolling with it. Nate, I wanted to go back to the sideline situation. You talked about it being an emotional game. Is that passion something that you appreciate seeing from Purcell, or is it something that you try to curtail and keep those emotions in check? Where's, what do you think just as a general rule on that sort of stuff? I mean, you want every one of your football players to want to do anything to win, and you want them to hold each other accountable. You want them to uh, try to fire each other up. I've always believed that it's a little different coming from a coach um, and then coming from a player. I think that whenever it comes from a player, you know, those guys, that means a lot to them. Um, so I, I appreciate his passion and understand it. I just don't want him to get that personal foul um, in that situation. But besides that, you know, I mean, I, I love when the guys are – Fired up. I mean, that's what we ask for, and we want everything fired up. You're playing a lot of young guys on the edge defensively right now. So, two-parter, what have you made of the, the pass rush overall the past three weeks? And then also, what's the sort of most unique element about having to prepare and deal with a guy like Lamar Jackson? Uh, with with the question towards the outside guys, uh, I mean, they're, they're doing everything that they can, and they're going to continually try to get to the passer. You have to affect the passer. Uh, it starts with stopping the run across the board to be able to put them in passing situations so we have more rushing opportunities. We didn't have a lot of those yesterday, um, but we, we got to get to the passer. And I know those guys, that, that's what they want to do. Um, when it comes to Lamar Jackson, I mean, you got to try to find a way to contain him. I mean, he's an incredible football player in this league. Uh, he can throw the ball down the field. And I mean, we see how many times he can run the different run uh, schemes that they have. I mean, uh, watching their tape, you know, uh, Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, has done a great job with all the different different kind of schemes and motions and shifts and different personnels to be able to utilize Lamar in the run game and hand it off. So uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our defense. Thank you.